is 2017 paper two all right state the largest positive integer and the largest negative integer can be stored using eight bits with two's complement representation all right the largest possible integer you could have with eight bit two's complement is positive seven yeah, it will be positive seven and the lowest and yet next possible value i can have is negative eight. positive seven will be zero one 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 and negative eight will be one 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 yeah well no negative it wouldn't be one 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 but it will be a different code because one 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 will be something totally different but you could prove it by showing um you could work out what negative eight is um which will be eight under normal circumstances one zero 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 and when you invert it you'll get zero one 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 and then when you add one you will get um one carry one carry one carry one but this will be what negative eight is but you can't have you can't have anything higher than positive seven because you'll have seven will be zero one 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 and you can't change this but you can't change that bit to a one because then it will end up changing to negative eight so positive seven negative eight comprende okay. consider the floating point represent representation that consists of a sign bit three bits for the exponent and four bits to store the mantis uh, determine it uh, right okay so we have uh sign first one is the sign three bits for the exponent and then the mantis uh, so sign is negative the exponent is zero one one which is equal to three and mantissa is one zero one one so we're going to take the mantissa which is one zero one one and multiply it by two to the power of three which means move decimal point three places to the right so we'll get um so we'll end up getting one zero one point one because we jump in three to the right like so we're going from here and going there one two three once we get that we take the one zero one one and we can put in this one zero one is five and one is point five so five point five is the answer and the sign is negative so our answer is negative five point five okay All right so um yeah the highest possible value will be positive 127 and the lowest will be negative 128 because normally with the scale of um with the scale of two's complement you basically had to account for zero as being part of the positive set of numbers so you have eight possible numbers that could go from zero go up and then you have the eight possible numbers that could go from minus one go down so this will only go be 0 to 7. So uh, this will all be 2 to the n minus 1. No, 2 to the n minus 1. Yeah. And this one will just be 2 to the n. Yeah, so you are correct. It's really supposed to be positive 127 and negative 128. Because it will be 2 to the 8. Okay. Draw the truth table um, for x and not y. Alright, so we have the we have the and here, so we know the gate that we're using is an and gate. And we have a x here and we have a y here, but the y is a not y, so that should go there. So that should oh shocks the truth table. My bad. I did draw any diagram. Let's do this again. X and y then we have to represent and we have to represent um not y and then x and not y let's go we have zero 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 one one zero and one one those are our possible bit patterns and then we have to do the not y the not y will be one zero one zero and then we have to do the x not y so we take in we compare in this one here and this one here which will give us x and not y zero and one will be zero zero and zero will be zero one and one will be one and zero and one i mean one and zero will be zero that would give us that there that's our truth table for that no issues there draw diagram of a circuit that can accept two binary inputs referred to as x and y respectively the circuit should represent the propositional logic for x and not y okay this is the diagram so this is the and gate here we have x 
and we have y and we have the not for the holder so not y would go into here and x will go into there this is five marks this is really five marks how do but okay don't ask any questions describe the function of the following circuits in a computer a adder adds binary value a shift register shifts um, binary values to different flip flops a counter counts sequential count sequentially by adding bits so we'll just double check something here before i uh, believe that 20, uh, 18 and 19. yeah let me just double check what they what they put in the examiner's report for into 17 let's go to 15. <laughs> They wanted you to see. Okay, counter stores the address of the next instruction. Yeah, shifts binary values of different flip flops, adds binary values, and stores them. Yeah, those are, um, those are different types of registers. So they usually ask that. Got to know it. Draw a clearly labeled diagram of a multiplexer that selects one of perform four possible inputs. Alright, so we have multiplexer. Um, multiplexer. So, four inputs coming in. One, two, three, four. We call them I zero, I one, I two, and I three. And to select the four of them, you have S one and S zero. Those are the selection switches. And then you have um, Q or output. Basically, pretty much. Yep. That's all. Describe how multiplexer can be used to select the correct output in an ALU that contains circuitry to execute the functions and or option or shifting. The um, functions would be mapped to a, a particular input and the selection such as would um, determine which um, function is chosen. chosen example zero zero will map to and and zero one will map to or all right so now multiplexer the selection switches are the most important thing so you have to make sure that you state what the selection switch is selecting and basically whatever number you choose will be the first all the way up to the fourth um options then the number of selection control lines that will be needed for a multiplexer that has 10 inputs if you have 10 inputs you would need three control lines because three control lines will give you um, 16 possible inputs. All right, if you want, you could put two to the three is equal to 16, something like that. Two to the three is equal to 16, but it's one mark. So any one of those things should be able to get you that one mark. All right, so for part G, Bismarck, um, what is going to happen is, if you have a, if you have something, um, if for the reason that 10 has 4 bits in binary. No, once you put 4, that's cool. Once you have 4 somewhere, should be okay. So 4 control lines. Yeah, so 4 will give um, 16 possible inputs. Once you, once you mention the 4, that's all. They just want the number. I mean, in all actuality, you could just put four and call that judge. But I was just writing all of this extra stuff here to make sure that all the, all the things that you know you need to consider when you're doing the answer, I try to write that in there so that you'll be able to you know, make sense of it. All right, to A, draw a diagram that shows how a set of flip-flops can be used to create a forward register. Each flip-flop is able to store one bit of data. Okay, so you're going to take a flip-flop and put the four of them here. And the output will be Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. And whatever type of flip-flop you use, doesn't matter. All you need to know that show that is a flip-flop. So you could put the JK flip-flop, a J and a K, J and a K, a J and a K, J and a K. Okay, and um, yeah, forward register. So this will be this could be zero, 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 depending on the choice. So a flip flop, they they hold one bit of data. So your goal is to show that okay, for four bits of data, you just put four flip flops next to each other, and you should be okay. Yep. Say that again. You could go from zero to three in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's not a problem. 
either way it would be, it would be okay right. what really matters is that you know that there is a zero bit and there is a third bit because yeah i don't remember that this binary is represented all right describe the purpose of a decoder when accessing ram um okay. depending on the input sent to the decoder the correct um address would be um decoded and the computer would know the memory location to go to example zero zero would go to memory location one but um zero three would go to memory location four sorry that's zero three one zero would go to memory location four but there's only two marks so i gather that the paragraph should be good enough but i example to show that you know when you're when you're when you're using a decoder you shoot your whatever value you send in would be decoded to a binary to a decimal value on the other side usually a decimal value on the other side so should be good there all right derive the maximum number of ram locations that can be accessed in a computer that has a 8-bit memory address um and maybe two to the to the eight two to the eight is how much 256 256 yeah that is all i was surprisingly easy for two marks i'm gonna just double check something yeah 256 is basically you have an eight bit memory address and it's two two yeah two to the eight yeah. okay that was a little easier than expected i don't remember this question being so easy i think there was something else but okay two to the eight yeah explain why statements that access data stored in memory registers execute faster than statements stored in ram okay a register are located inside the CPU, which reduces the amount of no, it doesn't reduce the amount, which reduces the amount of travel time for the, ele the electricity, um, which re reduces the amount of um, steps required to copy bits from um, bits to the ELU, whereas RAM operates outside the cpu and the data must be copied from ram to register then um ALU, which is slower um yeah, yeah. it's basically because it's closer you don't have to do as much you don't have to do as much operations to get it there that's what makes it faster in proximity All right, next name three phases of the instruction cycle and outline how each phase operates Fetch execute no, fetch the code execute my bad fetch the code and execute all right so fetch will get the instructions from memory and load them into the cpu the code will determine the opcode and operands that the instruction requires execute the alu carries out the mathematical operation necessary and stores the stores the result there is a well fetch execute fetch the code execute is normally um the three that they ask for but there's also a case for store store is also one of the um parts so you could say store but they didn't do that here so normally execute and store is kind of bunched together for some reason so good enough there discuss why cache is expected to speed up a computer system include a definition of cache and explanation so okay cache is a high speed memory location that is located inside or very close to the cpu its speed of data um, storage processing me gives it the ability to operate at the same speed of the cpu thus enabling the computer to process faster if they ain't get four marks for that i don't know what will explain why computers with a 32-bit word size are expected to operate faster than computers with a 64-bit word size interesting the word size determines the amount of bits that can 
be processed. 32 bits would be processed faster than 64 bits. Ta-da! 32 examples of information that's stored in ROM. ROM would usually have um, boot up instructions and it would also have the BIOS system check ports. Okay, that was your module one. How did you fare? Had some tricky ones inside of it, but you're alive. You see all the hardest ones inside here. That um the flip-flop one or that had this one here. This one was kind of left field. The adder, the shift register, and the counter. That was kind of left field. But other than that, everything else was fairly straightforward. Yes, any problems? No problems done. You're good. Are you there? Are you just taking it in? Which one? Information stored in the ROM. Okay, um, when you press the power button on the computer, it has to get instructions on how to how to start up, how to actually like um begin the startup process. So that's the boot up instruction. And then the BIOS is um basic input output system. What the BIOS does is it kind of checks to make sure that everything is working properly before it even tries to start up. Because if it tries to start up and certain things are working properly, you'll run into errors. So the BIOS is like a pre-check to make sure that things working properly yeah when you press the when you point the computer and you see the little white writing on the black screen that kind of thing that's the bios checking to see if making sure everything is okay